More women and men have come forward against Diddy. Please make sure you subscribe by hitting that button down below, like my video, and leave a comment because I read every single one and I learn a lot from you guys. A former backup dancer of Sean Diddy Combs has spoken out to reveal her horrific experiences with the rapper after his homes in Los Angeles and Miami were raided this week. Tanika Ray said in a social media post that she knew to avoid him at all costs, adding that nothing that is happening is surprising. You know, we all have stories. Seriously, we all have stories. Mine is horrific and only five people know it. And I probably will never tell it. But it's since then I've been like, yep. And I also am very intimately aware that you tell your truth and you become victimized over and over and over and over and over and over. And mind you, I then interviewed him many times. <laughs> There's, I have a lot of stories, y'all. I've been in Hollywood for 25 years, maybe longer, 30. I got a lot of stories. Unfortunately, um, maybe I'll write a book one day. But it just is so traumatizing that women just want to live every day and feel safe. And when we revisit and revisit, we live in a state of victimhood and nobody wants to live there. So for those who are like, why didn't you say something then? Because we just want to live and want to be happy and we really want to forget the trauma. So there's that. I'm sorry for Tanika's experience and I appreciate and understand her prioritizing her healing and safety. Diddy is allegedly dangerous and could have killers, as we learned with his ex-girlfriend and mother of his two twins, Kim Porter, who was allegedly going to release a tell-all book about her relationship with Diddy before she died mysteriously at a very young age. Meanwhile, backing up the allegations that Diddy is a predator and the speculation of what he did to Usher and Justin Bieber, a former intern makes disturbing claims. The intern alleges that three to four months into their internship, it abruptly ended after the intern refused to spend a night over at Diddy's. Uh, I have never talked about this publicly and I and he said yes and they were flying around, one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet, in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what do you, why did it end? They wouldn't yeah. say. And years later, they finally came out, and this is a male, yeah. and said that uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me, or the internship is over. And they said, absolutely not. He said, absolutely not. And the internship ended. Uh, but from there, I was like, oh, like this is this My is God. how it goes. OK, yeah. OK. So to hear that things went even further with potentially, allegedly many other people. Yeah, it, it, it's it's not I don't it, you know, we, we feel like we've seen this. come. Wow. Another male. Of course, these are the things that Wendy Williams has been saying for years, and nobody listened. I mean, if she wasn't sick, I wonder what she would have to say about all of this. You know, what's worse? You know, hip hop wearing skirts or hip hop being closeted and having a plethora of kids to prove manhood that, you know, and, and denial of something that shouldn't you shouldn't have to deny, which is your So I hear what Jamar is saying, but uh, we come from a very homo era of hip-hop as well. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time, her name was Wendy Williams, and uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. And now it's all come full circle. Wow, she tried to warn us. Get well soon, Wendy. Because Diddy is said to be a predator, Music executive Suge Knight has warned his longtime hip hop rival, P. Diddy, that his life is in danger if he goes to jail. The clip was allegedly an outtake from the Death Row Records founders podcast, Collect Call, which Suge Knight hosts from a California state prison where the rapper is dead. Everybody been talking about the puppy situation. First, I'd like to pray for his family, his daughters and his sons, you know, his kids, basically. That's never a good sign for nobody to cheer about when it comes to kids or, you know what I mean, being handcuffed. It's a bad day for hip hop, for the culture, for black people. Because when one look bad, we all look bad. Because that's messed up.
definitely not nothing to cheer about. But I tell you what, Puffy, your life is in danger. Because you know the secrets. Who's involved in that little secret room you guys participating in? So, you know they're going to get you if they can. It's a little crazy how Puffy get booted out the alcohol business and Jimmy Ivan steps in with Andre and, and Snoopy promoting it. I turn myself in. Sometimes you got to face the music. That's most of the time. Puffy, I'm going to give you some real advice. Two quick things. You got to make a decision. When you go to prison, either you're going to be standing up to or squatting sitting down. I advise you to try to take the first one. Because you know, if you squat on the seat, you know what that means. Oh, yeah. By the way, do not do your time going by Brother Love. Brother Love is not a good code name for prison. And honestly, I am astounded that you can be in jail and host a podcast. But that's America for you. The feds have subpoenaed Diddy's private jet after it was revealed he would hire ex-workers like Young Miami to deliver him pink coke, which is also known as Tusi. It's also been revealed that at one time, Diddy would transfer liquid coke in Ciroc bottles on his private jets. This was revealed by an ex-worker, Jonathan Audi, three years ago. So it was a leaked interrogation where he would talk about the freak-offs he had with Cassie and Diddy years before Cassie's lawsuit revealed that information. I had with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would, uh, he would tell me what to do with Cassie. I had like 15 encounters and I heard lots of business because what they would do is Sean talks a lot on the on the phone and on the TV with people and stuff and I would be in the... I was like slave okay for them that's what i was that's all all right um i caught burpees and i came back and i sued him for the burpees and won but they didn't did mark gerros and ben mercedes were his attorneys okay and christopher leon's here was my attorney they asked me to turn in that which was the video recording, and I did so. All right, uh, help me understand you. Uh, how old are you? I'm 42. I've been through all my life. I've had a great life. I've settled five, four point one to five million dollars with Diddy. Okay. okay, was he scared that I wasn't exposed? I don't want to talk about Diddy right now. I want okay. to talk about you. Help me understand you. I mean, who? Jonathan's story is corroborated by news reports that he was buying a ton of houses at the time, and people were questioning where he got that money from. And now we know, Diddy was trying to keep him quiet so he wouldn't get investigated for trafficking, but that didn't work out as planned. Diddy has not been formally charged yet, but those charges can happen at any second. And I promise you, I will update you guys when that happens. So please make sure you subscribe by hitting my face right here.